In this lecture, we discuss zero padding. To discuss zero padding, we will examine the DFT of a single cosine function. The Fourier transform of a cosine function is a pair of impulse functions at negative omega naught and omega naught. If we choose to use only 32 samples of x of n, we say that we used a 32 sample window of x of n. By windowing x of n, we are implicitly assuming that every sample outside of the window is zero. The DFT of this windowed x of n would look like this. Notice how the DFT is no longer a perfect impulse function. Also, notice that the peak at sample 5 corresponds to positive omega naught, and the peak at sample 27 corresponds to negative omega naught. What would happen if we reintroduced some of the zero samples from outside of our window? Let's investigate this question by re-adding 32 zero samples after our x of n. Adding zeros to x of n is called zero padding. The 64 sample zero padded DFT of this function would look like the bottom graph. Notice that the zero padded DFT does not look more like a set of impulse functions than the original 32 sample DFT. Instead, the function looks like it has a series of humps. We call these humps side lobes. Let's investigate what happens if we add even more zeros. Will these side lobes get smaller or disappear? Unfortunately, no. Even if we increase the zero padding to 2048 samples, we still have these side lobes. So what we learned from this exercise is that zero padding does not actually change the DFT. Zero padding only changes the density of the samples of the DFT. If zero padding does not make the DFT a better approximation of the DTFT, why would we want to use zero padding? There are two reasons. First, we want more densely spaced samples of x sub d. Densely spaced samples of the DFT are useful if you want to show the DFT graphically. Notice how the 2048 sample version has more detail than the 32 sample version. Second, we want our input sequence length to be a power of 2. We will later discover that we can compute the DFT very quickly if the length of x sub n is a power of 2. This fast calculation is the main reason we use zero padding. So if zero padding does not more accurately recover the two impulses of the cosine function, how can we more accurately recover those impulses? We must widen our window of x sub n. While zero padding only increased the density of samples of the 32 sample DFT, increasing the sample size can actually cause our DFT to more closely resemble our original DTFT. Changing the window sizes changes many features of the DFT. In this figure, we can see that the increased window size increases the height of our main lobe, decreases the relative height of the side lobes, and it decreases the width of our main and side lobes. As the window size becomes very large, the DFT of our cosine will become a very good approximation of the two impulse functions.